Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and we are once again cooperating with chords today. Uh, I'm going to show you all about the chord definition dialog box, which is important to know about because it's sort of the, uh, you know, the grand central station for everything we need to know about individual chords. Um, there's a couple ways to get to the chord definition dialog box. First of all, if you have no chords in your score, you can simply double click at a rhythmic uh, or beat position and uh, it will pull up the chord definition dialog box. And uh, this is what we're talking about. Um, uh, now, if you don't have the second half of it, it could be because this uh, show advanced wasn't checked, um, but uh, just show it to, to show the second uh, half of it. Um, the other way to get to the chord definition dialog box, if you have a chord that exists already, you can get to that chord's definition by uh, a couple different ways. You can right click the handle and choose edit chord definition and that box appears. Or we can simply just select that chord and press the return key and it will open up the chord definition dialog box for you automatically. Now, uh, it's interesting to know that every single chord has its own chord definition, and there's a bunch of different things that are going on with this chord definition. Now, in the top section here, the chord symbol, we could simply type the chord that we want. So if we wanted this to actually say D7 uh, over F sharp, um, we could simply do that and click OK, and basically what we're doing is we're just changing that chord to D7 over F sharp. So this uh, theoretically is a way to actually enter notes in finale, or enter chord symbols in finale. You can just double click, type G7, press return to hit OK, and you get a G7 chord. That's a, a little bit slow way to do that, but it's possible. Um, once you have a chord in the score and you open the chord definition dialog box, there's a, a bunch of different attributes um, that are all uh, defined by these particular uh, settings. Uh, now, the first section here has to do with fretboards. Uh, now, you won't, even though the show where it says show, the fretboard is checked and uh, there is a fretboard selected in the ID here. It's this first one. Um, even though that you know you're seeing this. Uh, you're not seeing it in the score, and the reason for that is because in the chord menu, the show fretboards will not be checked by default. But as soon as you check that uh, option, um, you will get the fretboards to appear. Sorry, my, my chord position is a little out of line there, but that's that's because I did something uh, crazy with that. But um, anyway, so... Uh, the uh, the fretboards uh, you know the fretboard section will allow you to choose a specific fretboard for that particular chord suffix. We can edit directly the with the fretboard editor. Um, we can choose a different style of fretboard. We can edit the styles of the fretboards. All of this stuff with the fretboards is is a uh, several videos that I'm going to do later on in the series. So I'm sort of um, uh, glossing over this right now. But just be aware that. Uh, you know, this particular chord can have any setting for these fretboards that you need it uh, using the chord definition. Below the fretboard section is where we get to some of the, the more important things with the chord symbol itself. And we have the show options, which is basically um, telling you what is showing in the score. In this case, with the G7 chord, I'm showing the root, I'm showing the suffix. Now, even though fretboard is checked, uh, as I mentioned, because I don't have that option checked in the chord menu, it's not showing anywhere anyway. Um, but uh, you can uncheck that. <laughs> if this option is checked in the chord menu and this is unchecked, then this particular chord will not show that fretboard. So that's how that works. Um, and in this case, there's no alternate bass here. So that's why the alternate bass is unchecked. Uh, we can also choose to uh, check the lowercase, which will give us the lowercase g7 if we want. Um, and if we add the, let's say we're going to do this as, retype this as G7 over B, and then uh, en exit, enter that chord definition, we'll see that now the over B is there and the alternate base is checked. And again, we can lowercase that if we wanted to. And uh, we also have the options to change the, the style of the alternate base. Now, as you know, in the first video, I, I told you that you could use the slash key. You could use the underscore key to get the, 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 uh, the, uh, the chord on top of the, the, uh, the base note. And that was called the under root version of this. So if we check that, it will actually change that to that version of it. So you can see the G7 over B like that. Or we could use the other one. And Finale calls that as subtext. And that would be the uh, vertical slash uh, when you do the typing. 
and uh, you'll get that version of the alternate base. So we can um, manually change these uh, using this pull down menu uh, for the alternate base. In the play section, uh, Finale will play back chords if you have the enable chord playback checked in the uh, chord menu here. Uh, if you have that unchecked, it doesn't matter what is showing in this play section here, nothing will play back. But uh, with that checked, by default, Finale will really only play back the core, the root and the suffix. You can choose to check the alternate bass uh, playback here, uh, and that will also allow the bass to be played. Or you can uncheck all of this and check the fretboard, um, which will play back whichever fretboard you have selected uh, up here. Um, and uh, that will actually play back whether or not you're showing fretboards or not, which is uh, interesting to me. But uh, by default, Finale will set this up just playing the root and suffix. And again, there's going to be a whole dedicated video about playback for chords, uh, so stay tuned for that. Now, in the bottom section of the chord definition dialog box is sort of where um, uh, you know the magic happens with <laughs> with these particular uh, chords in, in Finale. It kind of clues you into exactly how Finale is thinking about chord symbols. Finale defines the chords by the scale tone for the root and for the alternate bass. So in the key of D major, uh, G7, uh, the G, which is the root of the chord, is actually the fourth scale tone, right? D, E, F sharp, G. Um, so that's why you see the number four here. The alteration is what would tell Finale to uh, e either sharp or flat that particular chord. So if I were to type in, uh, so one would be sharp, negative one would be flat. So if I were to type in uh, one here, uh, Finale will change that to G sharp seven, right? And it will actually change that in the score the same way, G sharp seven over B. Um, we could also type in negative one to get G flat and click OK. And uh, sometimes, oh, I already had this unchecked. Usually uh, that, that chord in that key would be F sharp seven. So uh, what's interesting is that despite the fact that this is defined as scale tone four, which would be G minus one, which would be G flat, I'm still getting F sharp seven here. And the reason for that is because the uh, simplify spelling is, is checked. If I uncheck that, then it's going to use this definition literally, meaning the G flat. Interestingly, these uh, alterations don't have to be uh, limited to one and negative one. If I put in negative two there, um, Finale is going to give me a G double flat seven chord. Just like that. And again, you know, if I had the simplified spelling checked, it wouldn't matter. It's going to give me that F7 chord, which is sort of the, uh, the simple version of G double flat seven. Um, so that's how the uh, the root works, and uh, we can also use this listen button, which will literally, you know, if you click that and play the note, Finale will figure out that that's the, the G that I just played, so it's the fourth scale tone with no alteration. So it's really all you need to do if you wanted to do it that way. Now it works exactly the same way with the alternate bass. It, it's based on the scale tone and the alteration. So again, you know, the B is this, the sixth scale tone uh, in D major, so that's why it's saying six and zero. Looking at it this way, you realize what uh, Finale is doing now is that these chords are uh, relative to the key. You know, it, it defines it by the scale tone, not by the, uh, the, 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 the absolute pitch, which means that when you change the key, if I were to go from D major to C major, um, those chords will transpose as well. This is what's allowing Finale to do this because now, you know, this F7 chord over A is still defined the same way. It's the scale tone four. It's just that in the key of C, F uh, is, this, is the fourth scale tone as opposed to G, right? So that's, uh, you know, when you think about it that way, that's, that's what's going on. Uh, and the reason why Finale uses scale tones versus uh, absolute pitches for the chord symbols and the alternate basses. Below that, we have uh, the suffix uh, section here. And uh, again, with the suffixes, there's a big suffix library. I've mentioned this before. And uh, it, it's in this particular chord definition, it's saying that the, the ID for this seven chord is 25. And if we press the select button, we can actually pull up the chord selection uh, library again. And you'll see that number 25 is selected, and it's the 7. So we can change it directly here. We can change it to number 26, which is 7 flat 5, and press Select. And you'll see it change G7 flat 5 up here. 
but also the ID will be 26. Now, of course, we could directly uh, type in the ID if we happen to know it, 25, and it will change it back to G7 over B. Um, there's an edit button here, which will take us directly to the chord suffix editor for that particular uh, suffix ID, to number 25, which is the 7. And so we can uh, edit this particular suffix uh, if we want to. Again, this chord suffix editor is a whole video unto itself, so look forward to that. Um, and then finally, there is a listen key. So actually, let's just change this to something else, like 9. Give us that weird chord up there. Um, this listen will uh, allow us to sort of play in the suffix. Now, finale is going to say, finale is listening. Play, please play the chord suffix without the root. So again, we're uh, the root here is G, so we have to make sure that we're playing the suffix on top of G. So in this case, I'm just going to play B, D, and F natural. And finale will calculate that as the seventh. Uh, so it's putting in that ID number 25, which is G7 in this case. Um, now, Finale uses basically the same uh, learned chord library that uh, it does when you do uh, MIDI inputs and staff analysis inputs. So uh, in the previous video, I talked a lot about that. So um, that it's sort of the similar thing is going on, that it's listening for that suffix uh, minus the root in this particular case. So, And then below that, uh, there's a couple options here for uh, the capo and the fretboard. Um, any particular chord can be a capo chord. If you have this checked and you enter a uh, value here, if we put two here, then it's going to put this chord on the second fret. And when you do that and click OK, it's sort of going to transpose that chord down a step uh, because that's how the you know it works thinking about capos. And it's also going to italicize it. And the reason it's italicized has to do with a, an option in the chord menu here for italicized capo chords. Um, right, so it, it's weird because it's possible to have capo chords right next to um, uh, normal chords, but uh, that's 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 the way it works. And again, capo chords is a, a whole video to itself. Uh, as I mentioned at the outset, the the chord uh, category is is fairly complicated. So, and then finally, this use fretboard font. Um, this I'm going to talk a little bit about when I talk about the fretboards, but uh, this option is actually, I, I think it's sort of a vestige of an old way of doing fretboards in Finale, so um, I'm going to sort of gloss over it for now. Uh, I may talk about it a little bit more um, later when I start talking about fretboards. But anyway, as you can see, that this, this chord definition dialog box is sort of setting up every single individual chord in a very specific way and uh, you can control a, a lot of different things uh, in, in very minute ways with all of these options. And as you can see, there's, this is also the jumping off point for a lot of other things that you, we can do with chords, including choosing and editing the fretboards, uh, choosing and editing the suffixes. You know, this is sort of, as I mentioned, the, the, the sort of grand central station for uh, every, every single chord definition. So, all right, so I think that covers it. Uh, this is the chord definition dialog box. Um, uh, it's an important piece of understanding chords in Finale, so hopefully this has helped, and hopefully I explained it well. And uh, that's really all there is to it. So uh, come back, and we're going to take a look at the utilities change uh, chords function in Finale, which is somewhat related to the chord definition dialog box. So I wanted to do that next for you, and uh, it's a very helpful tool. All right, so uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate you uh, joining me, and I will see you soon on the next video.